Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Doing some more Tesla coil stuff. Tesla coil related stuff, high voltage related stuff, you, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, I've built the Tesla tester. This is a circuit here. It's basically a Slayer exciter, but with a bit more oomph to it. And this is a circuit that I can use to test my coils. So, you know, we've got a MOSFET here, a couple of gate drive chips here, and I can select which one I want because one of them inverts, one of them doesn't invert, so I don't have to worry about the polarity of my primary coil. So, instead of reversing the connections on the primary, I can just flip this switch and select either the inverting or non-inverting chip and here is a simplified version of the circuit As you can see we've got the gate driver chip, the MOSFET, primary, secondary and a couple of protection diodes and yeah that's basically it when the switch is in either one position or the other this is the circuit that it forms and the only thing that changes is the actual chip that's in there so hope that's explained everything so anyway, what I've got here is the coil from my vacuum tube Tesla coil that you might remember a few videos back, the one that I blew. Okay, I better shut it off now, because I think... Yeah. Well, I'm just seeing if there's any hope of resurrecting this thing, and it seems pretty promising. You know, this was the top load I was using, which is just a bit of cardboard with a screw stuck through it, and then I had the wire sort of at the top load like that, and then I had the wire wrapped around the screw, and then I thought to stop it arcing from stop it arcing here where the wire comes over, although you cannot really see it, so I'll just turn it round. Here where the wire comes over and connects to the screw, I thought that putting a bit of tape across there would stop arcs from coming up from where the wire's been folded over, but of course it didn't. And the arcs ate their way through the tape. Here's some of the tape here. As you can see, you can see the arc just completely cut right through that. So I'm going to try putting the top load in a different way, which hopefully won't have us any arcs shooting out the side this time. So I'm just giving this coil a little test to make sure that it still works. That's why I'm using the Tesla tester circuit that I've made. So I turn this on, and I'm going to turn this multimeter on as well, so we can see what the frequency is. I've also got my handy dandy RF detector. So we turn it on. Well, it's working, and we're getting about 661 kilohertz. Just see if I can pull a little arc off that and just make sure. Yeah. Strange thing is, if we go over to my RF detector here, and yes, I know there are three things missing here. That's because there were some very sensitive components in those three drawers, which I wanted to move away from this thing so they don't get zapped. When I turn this on, this is without a top load, and I remember where the needle was. Now I'm going to stick a top load on this, which I'm just going to use this Coke can as my top load to get that to stay on there. Now if we look at the output, it picks the meter. And the frequency has gone down to about 490 kilohertz. That's definitely working. You probably cannot hear what I'm saying right now, because this does tend to interfere with the microphone quite a bit. So, that shows that one's working. This is my other secondary that I built. Now, I haven't had much luck with this secondary, however, on this circuit, this secondary has worked better than any of the others I've built, which is kind of strange. So I might save this for my next solid-state tester coil. It looks like it's nice and good, but 
I feed on electricity. I want more. More. Alright, so I um, thought I would do a little bit of an experiment here with this coil, putting it next to this one, which would be a lot better if you could actually see it, to see if it would have any kind of influence on it. And I've got the other end of this coil connected to ground, and we do actually get a streamer off the end of this coil. Although it would probably be a lot better if the camera was pointed at it. I'm just going to turn the lights down. You can see it more easily. The whole wire is just glowing with corona. You can pull a little arc off it. No, well, I cannot do that for too long because it just starts making the wire melt. Now, a weird thing is, though, if... <clears throat> so, if... I disconnect the ground. And this is something I did when I first tried this. But I didn't realize that I had this wire, sort of like that, on my soldering iron. It arced through the insulation to my soldering station. You can see that right there that it just burnt through the wire. But strangely enough, when this coil is not connected to ground, I can draw an arc off this wire, but not this one. It's kind of strange. As I will show you. You get a pretty hot arc off that. But the wire is glowing and smoking a bit. Yeah, but like I said, if I try and pull an arc off the top, nothing. You think when I do this, you'd think this would hurt, wouldn't you? But as a matter of fact, it doesn't even tingle. And of course, if you don't believe me, you can try this out for yourself. Only don't touch any of the metal parts of the coil with the screwdriver. You will get shocked if you do that. I found that out the hard way so you don't have to. But when arcing to a piece of metal that you're holding on to with no actual direct connection to any of the metal pieces on the coil, absolutely nothing. Even though that was about 10,000 volts. I thought, what kind of a Slayer Exciter video would this be without doing some other stuff like this? And of course, what kind of a test of a Slayer Exciter would this be without everybody's favourite? The light bulb. Well, compact fluorescent light. It's like magic. Magic. I feel like Uncle Fester from the Adams Family here. And no, I'm not going to put this thing in my mouth. Just have a look at the light. Okay, so here's the repaired secondary. As you can see, I've put a new top load on it. Very shiny, you can almost see the camera in it. And I've made extra special care with the insulation. This is where the wire comes out. You might just about be able to see a, a wire right there. And that's connected to this. And with all this tape around it, it should hopefully stop any sparks shooting out the side. And of course, when I put a top load on, like, I mean, when I put a breakout point on, that's how it's going to be. So I'll we'll have a quarter to a half a million volts shooting out of that. If it all goes well, 
Okay, so now we're going to test it on the Slayer Exciter Tesla tester circuit. Just to make sure that it works. Of course, on this circuit it's only going to do about 15,000 volts, but it's enough for a test. So, let's see if we get high voltage. Okay, that appears to be working. Alright, let's just test it with a breakout point. In the dark, of course. Okay, it's doing stuff. No. I would say we're just about ready. I think this is time to take this out onto the big boy circuit. And I'm going to touch the sparks and tell you what it was like. Okay, so we're almost ready to start. I think my camera's light is on, isn't it? Yeah, that shouldn't be on. Got the thing all ready, and I've gone to the extra safety measure of putting a piece of wire around the breakout point and then taping it to the top load. So we have good electrical contact, and I haven't got much battery left, so I'll have to make this quick. Hopefully, it won't break. Let's just do a quick test. Something's arcing in my primary. And my door's closed. I'm going to touch. Whoa. I'm going to touch. Yeah. We got fire. I guess that's the end of that project. So I guess you want to see the carnage after that, so... This is what happened. As you can see it flashed over. And we got an arc from the secondary to the feedback coil. As a matter of fact, I can see a few dents in the feedback coil. I think some of those might be from before I touched the spark. But it really flashed over when I touched it, so... Yeah. This primary is probably still salvageable, but this secondary, this is done for. This is hours of work destroyed in seconds by a single arc. Quite gutted about that, actually. Strange thing is, when I touched the spark, it was a bit more intense than what most people get, because when most people touch the sparks, they it's just a little measly purple spark, but... The one I got was a bit more intense, as you can see, but strangely enough, it didn't hurt. Just felt like a very mild static shock, you know, one of those ones where you don't even know if you really got shocked or not. It was more like just somebody tapping your hand like that. But yeah, anyway, so the next project I'm going to get on with is a proper solid state test of the coil. Not just a measly Slayer exciter, so until next time. Goodbye.